Welcome back, Love Nation. This is Nina. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you to everybody that has been coming to my channel. Like this video, share this video, and hit that notification bell so you guys know when I drop my next one. Listen, you guys, we're going to get straight into part three of the Garth Brooks versus Jane Doe lawsuit. And I'm telling you guys, this lawsuit is extremely shocking. So, trigger warning when I start reading this. I've had to code up words for YouTube purposes. So, some of the words had to be abbreviated. So, please try to follow along. Garth Brooks is being accused of doing some very, very um, wild things. You guys know he's had a very clean reputation uh, for the last few decades. He is one of the more legendary singers of our time. He sold millions of albums, and this lawsuit is absolutely bananas. I'm not here to pass judgment. I'm just here to read because a lot of people are curious about what is in these papers. So we're going to get straight into part three. Form your own opinion below. I'm not here to do so for you. And again, like, share, subscribe. And one more time, trigger warning. Here we go, guys. Brooks told her in 2020, I work with the best and I don't want to do something that's stupid that breaks this team up. So I will do whatever I need to do or do whatever I don't need to do. But I just want to keep working with you. But if you feel weird working with me, it's fine. We don't have to work together. In response, Ms. Rose said, I never found myself in the situation that is. I just don't know what I'm going to be able to look up from. And I'm frankly, I'm a little frightened of you. I really am. Garth Brooks said, Sweet baby, I'm so sorry. I can't imagine. That makes me frightened of you. In this phone conversation, Ms. Rowe explained that it would be difficult to work with Garth Brooks again, to which Brooks said, I am asking you to work together forever, and you have a place here as long as you want it. I'm lucky to have you. I don't want this to go anywhere. And I don't want something that happened in the moment to screw the whole 20 years I've known you. In addition to the phone calls, there were multiple text exchanges between Garth Brooks and Ms. Rowe. But while Ms. Rowe was at the studio with Brooks to style his hair in 2020, Brooks surreptitiously took her phone and deleted most of the text messages that he had sent to her containing explicit messages. Eventually, Ms. Rowe was unable to continue working for Garth Brooks, and she sought legal counsel about what had happened. In addition, in or about May 2021, Ms. Rowe moved to Mississippi. When Ms. Rowe's counsel contacted Garth Brooks and disclosed the fact that Ms. Rowe was prepared to file a complaint in California, to hold him accountable for his S.A., and even shared a copy of the drafted California complaint with Garth Brooks. He used the fact that Ms. Rowe had dared to speak about the harm he forced upon her as an opportunity to inflict even more harm and pain on Ms. Rowe, specifically while pretending to be in discussions with Ms. Rowe to resolve her legal claims against him. On September 13th of 2024, Garth Brooks filed a preemptive abusive complaint against Ms. Rowe under the Declaratory Judgment Act in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Mississippi, Northern Division, entitled John Doe v. Jane Doe, Case Number 24, Civic Number 00547. Here and after, the abusive Mississippi action. 
Incredibly, in the uh, abuse of Mississippi action, Garth Brooks labeled himself the victim and claimed that Ms. Rowe was lying extortionist who intended on destroying his professional reputation. Brooks alleged that she threatened to file her complaint in California only because Garth Brooks refused to give her a raise in a pay for health insurance. The abuse of Mississippi action by Garth Brooks is a blatant attempt to further control and bully his S.A. person by utilizing his multi-millionaire resources to game the legal system. As part of the lawsuit he filed against Ms. Rowe in desperation, Brooks simultaneously filed a motion to proceed under the pseudonym John Doe. The basis for this, as described by Brooks, was because he has a well-earned reputation as a decent and caring person, and therefore, if the essay allegations are disclosed, he says it will create unavoidable damage to his family. Brooks is a desperate to pre- prevent his millions of fans from learning about the horrific things he has said and done to a junior female employee who did nothing to deserve such treatment. But our legal system is not in place to allow wealthy wrongdoers the ability to run work around on a SA victim who attempt to hold their perpetrators accountable. Yet, this is precisely what Garth Brooks is trying to do in the abusive Mississippi action. As set forth below, Ms. Rowe commences this action pursuant to California's SA and Cover-Up Accountability Act, AB 2777, because her claims are based on conduct that occurred on or after July 1st, I'm sorry, January 1st, 2009, and are commenced after January 1st, 2019, see California Penal Code. Ms. Rowe seeks all appropriate relief to redress Brooks' egregious and unlawful actions in violation of common law torts for what he did in battery and in violation of California statutes for battery. Parties, next chapter. Plaintiff Jane Rowe is an adult citizen and resides in the state of Mississippi. Defendant Garth Brooks is an adult citizen and resides in the state of Tennessee. This court has jurisdiction over this action pursuant to California Code of Civil Procedure. Jane Doe seeks damages under the statutory and common law of the state of California. Venue is proper. Is this court pursuant to California Code of Civil Procedure 395 because because acts and transactions described herein occurred within this county. Next chapter, facts common to all causes of action. Background, Garth Brooks. At age 62, Garth Brooks is a two-time Grammy winner and has sold more than 162 million albums, making him the second best-selling artist of all time in the U.S., second only to the Beatles in total albums sold. His estimated net worth is about $400 million, and Forbes estimated that he made $45.5 million in 2018 alone. When he is not recording music and selling it, Garth Brooks is involved in numerous foundations and charities, including many dedicated to children. For example, he founded the Garth Brooks Teammates for Kids Foundation, which in partnership with professional athletes and corporations and other celebrities help children by funding and supporting programs in hospitals, sports for inner city children, and educational opportunities. In addition, Garth Brooks is involved in the Habitat for Humanity for the Carter's Work Project, in which he and his wife were named the inaugural Habitat Humanitarians alongside President Jimmy Carter, and former First Lady Rosalind Carter. In connections with the charity work, Brooks has publicly said that when I think of home, it is that safe place 
one of those things that you don't really think about every day if you have always had a place to live. The things that I have learned through volunteering with Habitat is everybody doesn't have a roof over their head. But what I love about Habitat is that it provides the basic first steps that creates a haven and a safe place. Garth Brooks' wife, Trisha Yearwood, has publicly said that Brooks' volunteer work with Habitat for Humanity is the following. With Garth, generous is the world that comes to mind. He really takes joy in helping others. I think Habitat fits him perfectly because it gives him a chance to do all the things that he is just so good at naturally. Brooks, through his foundation, built a playroom inside UCLA Mattel Children's Hospital that he said the following about. This is a child life zone. And what I love about child life zones is it's the place, the one place in the hospital that doctors are not allowed. If you've got a child that needs care, what happens to the brothers and sisters? Well, they come down here and they get to be brothers and sisters together here. Brooks helped to build more than 15 children life zones in hospitals across the country. Helping children and building houses are not the only charities Garth Brooks has dedicated resources to. He also helped support cancer research has held concerts to fundraise for public television stations such as Austin PBS and even made a surprise appearance at the Nashville Unlimited Christmas concert held at Christ Church Cathedral to benefit a nonprofit in Nashville. In 2024, Brooks performed on Mother's Day at the Vatican as part of the World Meeting on Human Fraternity organized under the theme of Be Human in the atrium of St. Petersburg's Basilica. I am going to stop there. This will be the end of part three. I will continue with part four very shortly. So if you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on this lawsuit as we continue to read through. Thank you very much. Be safe. Enjoy your day. Bye guys.